Lecture 5.4, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. This is Morro Rock on the coast of the state of California. To give you a sense of scale, if you look closely, you can see the two-story lighthouse keeper's house right there. Here's my favorite calculus textbook quote of all time, from Calculus by Ross L. Finney and George B. Thomas, Jr., copyright 1990. <clears throat> if you were being sent to a desert island and could take only one equation with you, the derivative with respect to x of the integral from a to x of f of t dt equals f of x might well be your choice. Of course, if you're being sent to a desert island, maybe water or radio would be a better choice than an equation. But apparently if you need an equation, this is the one to take. The Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 1. If f is continuous on closed interval a, b, then the function big F of x equals the integral from a to x of f of t dt has a derivative at every point in closed interval a, b, and the derivative of big F with respect to x equals d dx integral from a to x f of t dt equals f of x. The first fundamental theorem d dx integral from a to x f of t dt equals f of x. In its most basic form, the first fundamental theorem has the following characteristics. We are taking the derivative of an integral the derivative matches the upper limit of integration The lower limit of integration is a constant. And we end up with a new variable, and that variable was the upper limit of integration. Here's an example. The derivative with respect to x of the integral from negative pi to x of cosine t dt. Doing this the long way, we evaluate the integral by taking the antiderivative. So we have the derivative with respect to x of sine t evaluated from negative pi to x. We plug in the limits of integration. So we have d dx sine x minus sine negative pi. But the sine of negative pi is 0. Now we have d dx sine x or cosine x. Using the first fundamental theorem, we are taking the derivative of an integral. The derivative matches the upper limit of integration. And the lower limit of integration is a constant. So we can just write the answer, cosine x. Here's another example. d dx integral from 0 to x 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. We are taking the derivative of an integral. The derivative matches the upper limit of integration. And the lower limit of integration is a constant. So once again, we can just write our answer, replacing t with x.
the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 0 to x squared of cosine t dt. In this case, the upper limit of integration does not match the derivative, but we could use the chain rule. So we have cosine x squared times the derivative with respect to x of x squared. So we just put x squared in where the t was. And then we take the derivative of essentially the inside, but in this case it's the upper limit of integration. So now we have cosine x squared times 2x or 2x cosine x squared. ddx integral from x to 5 of 3t sine t dt. The lower limit of integration is not a constant, but the upper limit is. We can change the sign of the integral and reverse the limits. The negative sign moves to the outside. Now we have ddx integral from 5 to x of 3t sine t dt. And we meet all three of the requirements for the first fundamental theorem. So we get negative 3x sine x. The derivative with respect to x of the integral from 2x to x squared of 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt. Neither limit of integration is a constant. We can split the integral into two parts. So we have d dx integral from 0 to x squared 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt plus the integral from 2x to 0 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt. It does not matter what constant we used. I needed to write something, so I put in a 0. I could have just put in a as a constant. Now we reverse the limits on the second integral. So we have d dx integral from 0 to x squared, 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt, minus integral from 0 to 2x, 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt. So we can use the first fundamental theorem on both integrals. So now we have 1 over 2 plus e to the x squared times 2x minus 1 over 2 plus e to the 2x times 2. Notice we use the chain rule in both cases. And cleaning it up a bit, we get 2x over 2 plus e to the x squared minus 2 over 2 plus e to the 2x. The Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 2. If f is continuous at every point of closed interval a, b, and if big F is any antiderivative of f on closed interval a, b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals big F of b minus big F of a. That is the antiderivative at b minus the antiderivative at a. This is also called the integral evaluation theorem. We already know this. This is what we've been doing. To evaluate an integral, Take the antiderivatives and subtract.